Internet censorship in India is selectively practiced by both federal and state governments. DNS filtering and educating service users in better usage is an active strategy and government policy to regulate and block access to Internet content on a large scale. Also measures for removing content at the request of content creators through court orders have become more common in recent years. Initiating a mass surveillance government project like Golden Shield Project is also an alternative discussed over the years by government bodies. Overview OpenNet Initiative Report The OpenNet Initiative classified India as engaged in selective Internet filtering in the political, conflict, security, social, and Internet tools areas in 2011. ONI describes India as a stable democracy with a strong tradition of press freedom, that nevertheless continues its regime of Internet filtering. However, India's selective censorship of blogs and other content, often under the guise of security, has also been met with significant opposition. Indian ISPs continue to selectively filter websites identified by authorities. However, government attempts at filtering have not been entirely effective because blocked content has quickly migrated to other websites and users have found ways to circumvent filtering. The government has also been criticized for a poor understanding of the technical feasibility of censorship and for haphazardly choosing which websites to block. Topic: <reporters>, Reporters without borders. Countries under surveillance. In March 2012, Reporters without borders added India to its list of countries under surveillance, stating that since the Mumbai bombings of 2008, the Indian authorities have stepped up internet surveillance and pressure on technical service providers, while publicly rejecting accusations of censorship. The national security policy of the world's biggest democracy is undermining freedom of expression and the protection of internet users' personal data. Topic: <laughs> Freedom House Report. Freedom House's Freedom on the Net 2017 report gives India a Freedom on the Net status of partly free, with a rating of 41 scale from 0 to 100, lower is better. Its obstacles to access was rated 12 0 to 25 scale, limits on content was rated 9 0 to 35 scale and violations of user rights was rated 20 0 to 40 scale. India was ranked 26th out of the 65 countries included in the report. The Freedom on the Net 2012 report says India's overall Internet freedom status is partly free, unchanged from 2009. India has a score of 39 on a scale from 0 most free to 100 least free, which places India 20 out of the 47 countries worldwide that were included in the 2012 report. India ranked 14 out of 37 countries in the 2011 report. India ranks third out of the 11 countries in Asia included in the 2012 report. Prior to 2008, censorship of Internet content by the Indian government was relatively rare and sporadic. Following the November 2008 terrorist attacks in Mumbai, which killed 171 people, the Indian Parliament passed amendments to the Information Technology Act that expanded the government's censorship and monitoring capabilities. While there is no sustained government policy or strategy to block access to Internet content on a large scale, measures for removing certain content from the web, sometimes for fear they could incite violence, have become more common. Pressure on private companies to remove information that is perceived to endanger public order or national security has increased since late 2009, with the implementation of the amended IDA. Companies are required to have designated employees to receive government blocking requests, and assigns up to seven years imprisonment private service providers—including ISPs, search engines, and cyber cafes—that do not comply with the government's blocking requests. Internet users have sporadically faced prosecution for online postings, and private companies hosting the content are obliged by law to hand over user information to the authorities. In 2009, the Supreme Court ruled that bloggers and moderators can face libel suits and even criminal prosecution for comments posted on their websites. 
Prior judicial approval for communications interception is not required and both central and state governments have the power to issue directives on interception, monitoring, and decryption. All licensed ISPs are obliged by law to sign an agreement that allows Indian government authorities to access user data. Background In June 2000, the Indian Parliament created the Information Technology Act to provide a legal framework to regulate Internet use and commerce, including digital signatures, security, and hacking. The Act criminalizes the publishing of obscene information electronically and grants police powers to search any premises without a warrant and arrest individuals in violation of the Act. A 2008 amendment to the IT Act reinforced the government's power to block Internet sites and content and criminalized sending messages deemed inflammatory or offensive. Internet filtering can also be mandated through licensing requirements. For example, ISPs seeking licenses to provide Internet services with the Department of Telecommunications dot, shall block Internet sites and or individual subscribers, as identified and directed by the Telecom Authority from time to time. In the interests of national security, license agreements also require ISPs to prevent the transmission of obscene or otherwise objectionable material. In 2001, the Bombay High Court appointed a committee to oversee issues relating to online pornography and cybercrime. The court invited the petitioners, Jayesh Thacker and Sunil Thacker, to make recommendations on cyber laws. The committee published a report which analyzes the key issues and made recommendations regarding areas such as the licensing of cyber cafes, putative identity cards for cyber cafe visitors, that minors use computers in public spaces, and the maintenance of IP logs by cyber cafes. The committee also recommended that Internet service providers keep correct time logs and records. The report also addressed the protection of children from adult websites and advised Internet service providers to provide parental control software for every Internet connection. The committee also identified lack of technical knowledge in the police as a problem. The report was well received by the courts, and its recommendations are being implemented the police and cyber cafes. The cyber crime investigation cell was set up pursuant to a recommendation made by the committee. In 2003, the Government of India established the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team to ensure Internet security. Its stated mission is, "...to enhance the security of India's communications and information infrastructure through proactive action and effective collaboration." cert is the agency that accepts and reviews requests to block access to specific websites. All licensed Indian ISPs must comply with cert in decisions. There is no review or appeals process. Many institutions, including the Ministry of Home Affairs, courts, the intelligence services, the police and the National Human Rights Commission, may call on it for specialist expertise. By stretching the prohibition against publishing obscene content to include the filtering of websites, cert in was empowered to review complaints and act as the sole authority for issuing blocking instructions to the Department of Telecommunications. Many have argued that giving cert in this power through executive order violates constitutional jurisprudence holding that specific legislation must be passed before the government can encroach on individual rights. I am mystified by our government's approach both to the Internet and to the millions of Indians using it. It does not adhere to the values of our republic and democracy. This matter needs to be addressed urgently, for which I propose to file a pill in the Supreme Court. Don't kill the freedom of speech, change the IT rules," says Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Member of Parliament. <laughs> Instances of censorship <laughs> Reliance Communications – Backs All, Blocks All It stays the most unfriendly organization for customer satisfaction. Due to its wide reach in all sectors and associations with primary government figures, it has drilled down to everything. Reliance continues to be behind many small internet providers and continues to block major file sharing websites among others, significantly disabling open internet in India. Topic: Don website 1999 
Immediately after the Kargil War in 1999, the website of the Pakistani daily newspaper Don was blocked from access within India by Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited, a government-owned telecommunications company which at the time had monopoly control of the international internet gateways in India. Rediff, a media news website, claimed that the ban was instigated by the Indian government, and then published detailed instructions as to how one could bypass the filter and view the site. Topic: <laughs> Yahoo Groups 2003. In September 2003, Kinhun, a Yahoo group linked to the Hunutrep National Liberation Council, an illegal minor separatist group from Meghalaya, which discussed the case of the Khasi tribe, was banned. The Department of Telecommunications asked Indian ISPs to block the group, but difficulties led to all Yahoo groups being banned for approximately two weeks. Topic. Websites blocked 2006 In July 2006, the Indian government ordered the blocking of 17 websites, including some hosted on the GeoCities, Blogspot and Typepad domains. Initial implementation difficulties led to these domains being blocked entirely. Access to sites on these domains other than those specifically banned was restored by most ISPs after about a week. Orkut and Indian Law Enforcement Agreement 2007. In 2007, Indian Law Enforcement entered an agreement with the then popular social networking site Orkut to track down what it deems defamatory content which, in their example, includes content critical of Bal Thackeray. New IT rules adopted The IT rules 2011 were adopted in April 2011 as a supplement to the 2000 Information Technology Act The new rules require Internet companies to remove within 36 hours of being notified by the authorities any content that is deemed objectionable, particularly if its nature is defamatory, hateful, harmful to minors, or infringes copyright. Cybercafé owners are required to photograph their customers, follow instructions on how their cafés should be set up so that all computer screens are in plain sight, keep copies of client IDs and their browsing histories for one year, and forward this data to the government each month. <laughs> <laughs> Websites banned In March 2011, the government banned several websites, Typepad, Mabango, Clickatel, and Facebook for some time without warning. On the 21st of July 2011, all file hosting websites were blocked by ISPs to prevent copyright infringement of the film Singham, causing anger amongst internet users. This ban was later lifted. On 24 December 2011, Reliance Communications, a widely used ISP, again blocked access to file sharing sites, having obtained a John Doe order from a Delhi court to help protect the movie Don 2 several days before its release. The block was lifted on 30 December 2011. Topic: <laughs> Pre-screening of Internet content On 5 December 2011, the New York Times India Inc. reported that the Indian government had asked several social media sites and internet companies, including Google, Facebook and Yahoo, to "...prescreen user content from India and to remove disparaging, inflammatory or defamatory content before it goes online." Top officials from the Indian units of Google, Microsoft, Yahoo and Facebook had several meetings with Kapil Sibyl, India's acting telecommunications minister to discuss the issue in recent months, India Inc. reported. In one meeting, Sibyl asked these companies, "...to use human beings to screen content, not technology," the article said. On 6 December 2011, Communications Minister of India Kapil Sibyl held a press conference confirming the India Inc. story. We have to take care of the sensibilities of our people," Mr. Sibyl told more than 100 reporters during a press conference on the lawn at his home in New Delhi. 
cultural ethos is very important to us. On 7 December 2011, The Times of India revealed that the search engine Google was asked to remove around 358 items by the Government of India out of which 255 items were said to criticise the government as per a Google Transparency report. The government had asked Google to remove 236 items from Orkut and 19 items from YouTube for the same reason, it added. Other reasons include defamation 39 requests, privacy and security 20 requests, impersonation 14 requests, hate speech 8 requests, pornography 3 requests and national security 1 request. Google admitted that 51% of the total requests were partially or fully complied with. The news of banning and blocking objectionable content on the internet was seen negatively by many Indian netizens and hashtag idiot Kapil Sibyl trended on Twitter after netizens expressed the outrage over the move. It was seen as a way to block websites criticizing the government. In an interview to NDTV, Kapil Sibyl responded by saying that most of the content being asked to be removed was pornographic in nature and involved deities, which could have caused communal disharmony. While Kapil Sibyl claimed that the government wanted to remove pornographic content, Google Transparency Report published by Google claims that the content that included protests against social leaders or used offensive language in reference to religious leaders were not removed. Google on its Transparency Report states, We received requests from state and local law enforcement agencies to remove YouTube videos that displayed protests against social leaders or used offensive language in reference to religious leaders. We declined the majority of these requests and only locally restricted videos that appeared to violate local laws prohibiting speech that could incite enmity between communities. In addition, we received a request from a local law enforcement agency to remove 236 communities and profiles from Orkut that were critical of a local politician. We did not comply with this request, since the content did not violate our community standards or local law. Google on this matter has also said that, when content is legal and does not violate our policies, we will not remove it just because it is controversial, as we believe that people's differing views, so long as they are legal, should be respected and protected. While presently there are talks going on between the government and officials of Internet companies like Google and Facebook, there is no consensus on this issue. Topic. Ban on cartoons against corruption In 2011, a nationwide anti-corruption movement India Against Corruption gathered pace in the leadership of a veteran Gandhian Anna Hazare demanding Jan Lokpal bill. Political cartoonist Asim Trivedi joined the crusade and started a cartoon-based campaign, Cartoons Against Corruption to support the movement with his art. He launched a website www.cartoonsagainstcorruption.com consisting of his sharp anti-corruption cartoons targeting corrupt system and the politicos. He displayed his cartoons in the MMRDA ground, Mumbai during the hunger strike of Anna Hazare. Asim Trivedi was exhibiting his political cartoons from Cartoons Against Corruption in the anti-corruption protest at the MMRDA grounds, when his website was suspended by crime branch, Mumbai. It was only 27 December, the first day of the protest, when he received an email from Bigrock, the domain name registrar with which his website was registered, saying, we have received a complaint from Crime Branch, Mumbai against domain name cartoonsagainstcorruption.com for displaying objectionable pictures and texts related to flag and emblem of India. Hence we have suspended the domain name and its associated services. The site was suspended after a complaint to the Mumbai Crime Branch by a Mumbai-based advocate and Congress leader, R.P. Pandi. The complaint stated that defamatory and derogatory cartoons," were displayed as posters during Mr. Hazare's hunger strike in Mumbai. Noting that the posters were created by Asim Trivedian, are believed to be made at the instance of Sri Anna Hazare. The complaint requested, strict legal action in the matter. Following his website's ban, Asim Trivedi uploaded all the cartoons to a blog he quickly created. Topic 2012. Topic <inaudible> Delhi Court Summons. In January 2012, a Delhi court issued summonses to Google and Facebook headquarters for objectionable content. 
This was followed by the Delhi High Court saying that websites such as Google and Facebook were liable for the content, posted on their platform by users, as they benefited from the content. Google responded to both the court and the Minister for Communication and IT Kapil Sibyl, stating that it was impossible to pre-screen content. A plea was made by an educationist citing any sanctions against the online services will directly affect the fundamental right and will be against public interest. The Delhi court also allowed Yahoo's case to be heard separately after it appealed citing it did not host any objectionable content and does not fall under the social networking site category. <laughs> Websites blocked Starting 3 May 2012, a number of websites including Vimeo, The Pirate Bay, Torrents and other torrent sites were allegedly blocked by Reliance Communications, on orders from Department of Telecom without any stated reasons or prior warnings. <laughs> Reliance DNS servers compromised In May 2012, Anonymous India a branch of the hacktivist group Anonymous, hacked the servers of Reliance Communications to protest the blocking of Vimeo, the Pirate Bay, Torrents and other torrent sites. The ISP Reliance Communications stated that it simply followed a court order. The group also hacked Reliance DNS servers preventing direct access to Twitter, Facebook and many other websites in India on 26 May 2012 for allegedly blocking its Twitter handle at apindia underscore revenge. They went on to warn the government to restore all the blocked websites till 9 June 2012, and has planned a nationwide protests on the same date. After this hack, Anonymous also released a list of websites that had been blocked by Reliance without any orders from the government, raising questions of private and unaccountable censorship by telecom providers. <laughs> Annulment motion in Parliament against 2011 IT rules An annulment motion against the Information Technology Intermediaries Guidelines Rules, 2011 moved by Member of Parliament MP, P. Rajiv of the Communist Party of India Marxist in the Rajya Sabha, was the first serious attempt by Internet freedom activists to get the Information Technology Act, 2000 discussed and reviewed by the country's lawmakers. Not unexpectedly, the motion specifically against the rules governing intermediaries, clause ZG of subsection 2 of section 87 read with subsection 2 of section 79 of the IT Act, 2000, was not carried. However, the discussion that preceded it at least demonstrated the concerns of parliamentarians about what Internet freedom activists have termed the draconian provisions of the IT Act. Topic. Save Your Voice campaign Save Your Voice is a movement against Internet censorship in India. It was founded by cartoonist Asim Trivedi and journalist Alec Dixit in January 2012. The movement opposes the Information Technology Act of India and demands democratic rules for the governance of Internet. The campaign is targeted at the draconian rules framed under the Information Technology Act, 2000. Topic. Madras High Court, entire websites cannot be blocked On 15 June 2012, the Madras High Court has passed an order saying that entire websites cannot be blocked on the basis of John Doe orders. The High Court order reads the order of interim injunction dated 25 April 2012 is hereby clarified that the interim injunction is granted only in respect of a particular URL where the infringing movie is kept and not in respect of the entire website. Further, the applicant is directed to inform about the particulars of URL where the interim movie is kept within 48 hours. The High Court provided this clarification after being approached by a consortium of Internet service providers. The order has been welcomed by the Indian media and net users. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Domain hosting sites. Starting in July 2012, several domain hosting sites were banned. When opening these sites, a message saying that these sites have been blocked by the Department of Telecommunications or court order is displayed. Sites such as Bidomains.com, Fabulous.com, and Cedo.co.uk were blocked. 
Topic: <laughs> Censorship following Assam violence. Between 18 and 21 August 2012 the Government of India ordered more than 300 specific URLs blocked. The blocked articles, accounts, groups, and videos were said to contain inflammatory content with fictitious details relating to Assam violence and supposedly promoting the North East exodus. These specific URLs include the domains of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Blogspot, WordPress, Google+, Wikipedia, Times of India, and other websites. Many of the blocked URLs are Indian right-wing activism against corruption. This raised questions about freedom of speech in the largest democracy in the world. It also raised questions about the censorship of people and posts debunking rumors. The Economic Times called it levels of censorship that have not so far been seen in India. Over four days from 18 August, the Government of India issued directives to Internet service providers to block Twitter accounts of two Delhi-based journalists, Kanchan Gupta and Shiv Aror, and Praveen Tagadia. The government also blocked the website of Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh and several other right-wing websites. In addition, articles from Wikipedia, and news reports of violence in Assam on the websites of the Times of India, First Post, The Daily Telegraph and Al Jazeera were blocked. A petition was created to oppose internet censorship in India by the Indian diaspora in the US. Topic: Telecom Minister's website defaced. In November 2012, Anonymous India defaced Indian Telecom Minister Kapil Sibyl's constituency website in protest against an amendment to the Information Technology Act and the recent crackdown on netizens for comments posted online. <laughs> BSNL website defaced Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited's BSNL website, www.bsnl.co.in, was hacked by Anonymous India on 13 December 2012. They defaced the website with a picture stating that they protest against Section 66A of the IT Act and in support of cartoonist Asim Trivedi and Alec Dixit. The duo have gone on a hunger striker to protest against Section 66A. Topic twenty thirteen. Topic thirty nine websites blocked. In an order dated 13 June 2013, the Department of Telecom directed Indian Internet Service Providers ISPs to block 39 websites. The order did not specify a reason or law under which the websites were blocked. Most are web forums, where Internet users share images and URLs to pornographic files. However, some of the websites are also image and file hosts, mostly used to store and share files that are not pornographic. While watching or distributing child pornography is illegal in India, watching adult pornography is not. The blocked websites are hosted outside India and claim to operate under the US rule that requires performers to be over 18 years of age. Topic 2014 Topic File sharing and file hosting sites banned In an order dated 23 June 2014, the Delhi High Court upon a request made by Sony Entertainment ordered 472 file sharing and file hosting websites blocked, including the Pirate Bay, Google Docs, Google Videos, and Google's URL shortener, goo.gl. This is contrary to the 2012 Madras High Court orders which blocked only URLs referencing web pages with illegal content, rather than entire websites. However, it was reported on 7 July 2014 that an updated court order blocks just 219 sites. Included are many file storage and torrent websites, but no Google sites. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Whistleblower Savuku's site blocked by Judge C. T. Selvam. 
In an interim order on the petition filed by newsreader Mahalaksmi, Justice Cyril Selvam blocked the entire website www.savuku.net. This order on 28 February 2014 directly contradicts an earlier order by Madras High Court on 15 April 2012 against banning entire website instead of specific URLs. Earlier in February, Savuku.net had exposed the tapes of conversations between DMK MP Kanamazi and former additional Director General of Police ADGP, Jaffer Sate, Jaffer Sate and Kalaignar TV's former director Sharad Kumar, and DMK President M. Karanadi's secretary K. Shunmaganathan and Jaffer Sate, Judge C. T. Selvam is considered to be close to Karanadi's family. Justice C. T. Selvam became judge of the Madras High Court when Karanadi was the chief minister of Tamil Nadu during 2006-2011. Just a couple of hours before taking oath as Judge Justice Selvam called on Karanadi and got his blessings and this was revealed through a GOVT press release with photograph by the Tamil Nadu government's information department. <laughs> Ban of porn sites The Indian government banned access to sites hosting pornography in November 2014. The ban was later lifted within a week due to heavy public pressure. Kamlesh Viswani, the lawyer behind the ban in his petition said, watching porn itself puts the country's security in danger, encourages violent acts, unacceptable behavior in society, exploitation of children and lowers the dignity of women and he believes watching online pornography has a direct co-relation with crimes against women, to say Indian women watch porn as an insult to their dignity, watching porn also promotes sexual violence against women and children, he said. He states, pornography creates stereotypes representation of women and becomes the basis behind unequal treatment sick of women in society. Chetan Bhagat, an investment banker turned novelist, described the porn ban as anti-freedom, impractical, and not enforceable. He satirically suggested that India next ban olive oil as being too Western, comedic television, and pizza due to not being Indian cuisine. Anyone who has an opinion different from yours must be banned. Bhagat said on Twitter, After all, you are always right. <laughs> 32 blocked websites The DOT ordered blocking of 32 websites including Archive.org, GitHub, Dailymotion, Vimeo as they could host terror content relating to ISIS but the sites are no longer blocked as of 1 January 2015 as the order had been reversed and the unblocking process has begun on compliant websites. <laughs> Topic. 2015 On 1 August 2015, 857 pornographic sites were blocked under Section 79.3 b of Information Technology Act, 2000, to restrict access to pornographic content. This list was given to government officials by Petitioner Kamlesh Viswani on 17 October 2014 in Supreme Court of India. The original list was generated by a Suresh Kumar Shukla, founder of Filternet Foundation which makes pornography blocking software and contained popular sites. The block was ordered by the Government Department of Telecom on 31 July 2015. A copy of the order is available through media websites. The ban was lifted on 5 August by DOT. Porn is major internet traffic as high as 70% and telecom companies were losing revenue. Additionally people criticized the law enforcement section 67 of IT Act 2000 as of 2015 India now blocks more facebook content than any other nation some bollywood studios came up with public education message that black money generated from pre-release of their content through offline markets are sourced for terrorism though sources were not clear reports show that piracy losses are significantly high Topic 2016. In September 2016, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare told a court that Google, Microsoft, and Yahoo had agreed to censor all information on their search engines related to prenatal sex discernment in order to comply with the Pre-Conception and Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Act, 1994. Topic 2017. 
In August 2017, the Madras High Court ordered that the Internet Archive be blocked in India, following complaints by film studios who alleged that the service had been used to disseminate copyright infringing copies of its films. Topic 2018 On the 27th of October 2018 the Department of Telecommunications in India banned 827 sites as they did in 2015 Geo Telecommunication became the first internet service provider who banned these sites This ban came into effect after the Uttarakhand High Court reinforced the Supreme Court's 2015 ban Topic. Blocked websites Over the years, the government has banned thousands of websites and URLs in the country with the help of Internet service providers or under the directive of the courts. For example, in August 2015, the government banned at least 857 sites for their pornographic contents and in June 2016, the government further banned over 200 URLs for providing escort services. In August 2015, the Central Government of India ordered Tri and Internet service providers based in India to ban domestic and international porn websites. In response, nearly 857 websites were blocked. Star India Private Limited, an entertainment company owned by 21st Century Fox have successfully gained authorization through hoodwinking the court. They can now force ISPs to block entire websites to tackle internet piracy and sharing for their copyrighted content. This was gained through falsifying data that these sites are uploading videos when it is a user-centered activity and covering up the fact each of these websites have active departments to regulate any sorts of infringement and misuse of their services. Pratibha M. Singh, who had represented Star India, cited poor resources of media giants like Star India, for targeting these domains without block expiry period and their legal team termed these sites as rogue sites, and expressed delight in their successive filing from 2014 and incognito win to violate freedom of trade on the internet at least in India. Though some critics say this would be lifted eventually by seeing the fallacy as in similar previous cases. Many has raised their voice through social media that the proceedings being overly suspicious and was gained for a alternate means, which is aimed for profiting rather than the initial spike of alleged piracy of these copyrighted contents and strengthening an ongoing practice of bottle-necking the internet users to forced payment and culture of on-demand online access to content. This has happened in the same week where media personnels filter free over indulgences to manipulate ongoing cases and political statements without any guidelines were appalled by lawyers in the country. In 2016, India also put forwarded a new plan to control internet usage of its netizens. Accessing or pop-ups from ad services or malware infection of websites banned in India might invite three years of jail sentence and a fine of 3 lakh rupees. Until now, URLs and websites were blocked using DNS filtering. This means the DNS of the blocked site was added to a list maintained by the Internet Service Provider and whenever a user tried connecting to that site, the DNS server of the Internet Service Provider would block that request. Officials suspect netizens are circumventing these measures knowingly or unknowingly. The government also intends to provide broad educational information classes, provide free operating systems with utilities for malware, free access to Internet, and for computerized activities of daily life as a primary method. Currently, the government is joining hands with media content providers and Internet service providers like big companies Tata Communications and Airtel to manage a number of Internet gateways in India. Though many legal, technical and social action groups consider this as a threatening approach. Many social action groups say that these is inappropriate time and money spend while real issues like unemployment, access to education, freedom of practicing religion, women and children safety, drug use are ever rising. Lawyers with technical background say this might be warning message and DNS filtering is a better practice for enforcing anti-piracy laws in current India. Some of them are also wary about how will these actions get reflected in terms hostility towards human rights, implications of these fines, profiteering stakeholders' agendas, is it the government's first step to a long-term plan, monitoring the whole World Wide Web, as China does. Many of these services are malvertising, click-away access and pops-ups, how does the government intend to tackle these issues and problems with the current plan that is heavily in favor of corporations' margin and doesn't cater to its users' needs? 
Other groups express their fear and uneasiness whether these will lead to emergency era like arrests where anything that government bodies believe is an offence under the laws of India, including but not limited to under sections 63, 63A, 65, and 65A of the Copyright Act, 1957. Warning that allegedly created for Tata and Airtel users with threats implied beyond normal. Remainder and block message shows as this URL has been blocked under the instructions of the competent government authority or in compliance with the orders of a court of competent jurisdiction. Viewing, downloading, exhibiting or duplicating an illicit copy of the contents under this URL is punishable as an offence under the laws of India, including but not limited to under sections 63, 63A, 65 and 65A of the Copyright Act, 1957 which prescribe imprisonment for three years and also fine of up to 3 rupees, 000. Any person aggrieved by any such blocking of this URL may contact at EarlBlock at tatacommunications.com who will, within 48 hours, provide you the details of relevant proceedings under which you can approach the relevant high court or authority for redressal of your grievance. Current situation that have led to this sudden moves is reported to be by influence of film studios in India and courts who have regularly issued orders in the favour for them. Often these are done with the contracted lawyers of film studios approach courts in regular intervals ahead and after a movie's release seeking preventive blocks on the URLs they compile and list. This lists in reality are unprofessionally and poorly compiled and often block is sought on full websites just on the basis of whims and fancies. Once this order are issued, the copies of the order along with the list of URLs to be blocked go to DOT, which then they pass an order to Internet service providers to block these sites. The interesting part here is that once a URL is blocked it remains blocked, even years after the release of the film without an expiry. Patent lawyers also suggest to make practical changes in its laws according to the current e-environment like making materials accessible within six months to one year and protecting the content from manipulation and creative infringement of the same under copyright laws to lessen the current piracy problems. Usage of Internet kill switch Topic. Jammu and Kashmir The state government shut down the Internet on 17–18 March 2014 in Jammu and Kashmir to stop separatists from addressing a United Nations Human Rights Council sideline event via video link in Geneva. Internet access was shut down again for mobile and landline broadband in July 2016 against the backdrop of protests. The state government of Jammu and Kashmir on 26 April 2017 ordered the various Internet Service Providers ISPs operating in the valley to block access to 22 social networking websites for one month saying among other things, "...endangering public life and property and causing unrest, disharmony in the state." Pertinently, the order was passed by exercising the powers conferred under the Indian Telegraph Act, 1885 which technically became obsolete circa 2008 when the Government of India decided to stop all telegraph services in the country. As a result of this censorship, people living in the valley have resorted to circumvention tactics in the form of using web proxies, VPNs among other things. The popularity of these tactics have compelled the government to block access to Android Play Store among other services for some time in a bid to prevent citizens from getting access to these services. The banned services include widely used services like Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp but also surprisingly the list includes websites like QQ, Baidu, QZone, which are not used outside of mainland China, Zanga, a website featured in the list, shut down in 2013. These websites mostly being in Mandarin has people concerned that the censorship has been an attempt to suppress dissent only by all means necessary, as opposed to their claim of maintaining peace and harmony. Gujarat 
The state government shut down the Internet in Vadodara, Gujarat from September 27, 2014 for three days due to communal clashes between two communities, even though only the central government has the power to shut down the Internet under the Information Technology Act, 2000 and that, in addition, under a declared state of emergency under Article 352 of the Constitution of India when freedom of speech and expression is suspended. No formal announcement was made regarding this by the city police or the internet service providers. When Padadar reservation agitation turned violent on the 25th of August 2015, the internet service on mobile phones and certain websites like WhatsApp and Facebook on broadband were blocked for six days, from the 26th of August 2015 to the 31st of August 2015, across the state. Topic: Nagaland 2015. The state government of Nagaland shut down the internet in the entire state from the 7th of March 2015 for 48 hours due to the mob lynching of a man. Topic: <laughs> Nagaland 2017. Both SMS and internet data services were suspended in Nagaland from the 30th of January, which were restored on the 20th of February after being blocked for 20 days. The block was initiated to prevent the spread of violence in the state. This situation came up when two Naga tribal bodies had served a three-day ultimatum to Zeliang to step down following the government's decision to hold local body elections with 33% reservation for women in 12 towns across the state and the death of two persons in clashes between the police and protesters at Damapur, the commercial hub of Nagaland, on the night of January 31. Manipur 2015. The state government of Manipur shut down the Internet of some service provider those who provide Internet through mobile technology 2G, 3G, 4G in Manipur from 1 September evening to 8 September 2015 afternoon due to agitated over the passing of three bills. Police and protesters clashed in different areas of Churishanpur district as mobs went on rampage attacking residences of ministers, MLAs and MP. Topic: Manipur 2016. The state government of Manipur ordered by respective deputy commissioner DC to shutting down mobile data service in Imphal West and Imphal East district from the 17th of December 2016 till further order. On 18 December 2016 Home Department of Government of Manipur ordered to shut down all mobile data service, SMS in Manipur from 10 a.m. on 18 December 2016 to 10 a.m. on 30 December 2016. Manipur 2018 The state government of Manipur ordered all forms of telecom services except voice calls were suspended for five days in Manipur with effect from Thursday night of July 2018 to prevent anti-national and anti-social messages on social media. KSH, Ragumani Singh, Special Secretary Home Manipur, in an order issued in the name of the governor said the prohibition is imposed under Rule 2 of the Temporary Suspension of Telecom Services Public Emergency or Public Safety Rules, 2017. For second time in 2018 the state government of Manipur ordered to shutting down mobile data service in Manipur for five days in Manipur with effect from 21 September 2018. The prohibition is imposed under Rule 2 of the Temporary Suspension Suspension of Telecom Services Public Emergency or Public Safety Rules, 2017. An order issued by Special Secretary Home K. H. Ragumani said the step was taken to prevent spread of rumors which might have serious repercussion for the law and order situation in the entire state of Manipur. Manipur 2018. See also Censorship in India Information Technology Act 2000 Websites blocked in India Fundamental Rights in India Fundamental Rights, Directive Principles and Fundamental Duties of India <laughs>